Kirchhoff gave us, what a guy, not just one, but actually two rules to keep in mind when we're working with circuits to help us solve these things. Now, the last rule we looked at, the junction rule, was really just the conservation of charge, the idea that we don't have any charges being created or destroyed, so however much charge we have entering some point, we have to have that same amount leaving some point. Kirchhoff's loop rule, the second uh, rule that we'll look at, is really just a restatement of the conservation of energy. That in a closed system, the amount of energy has to stay the same over time. And so we'll look at how that applies to the electric um, systems in just a minute. Uh, but first, I think it'll be another useful uh, time to take a look at the analogy for water moving um, as, as an analogy for charges moving. So here we have kind of a, another circuit analogy where our pump is serving as our battery. We have our water flowing and every once in a while it drops in height and then it stays at a constant height and then it drops in height and a constant height and it drops in height and it gets pumped all the way back up to the top and it repeats that. So this is like a circuit where we have resistors, where we drop our um, energy, our uh, voltage for our electrons, and then we drop our electric energy again, and then we drop our electric energy again every time we have a resistor. Now, if we looked at some bit of water there, some molecule of water, or some chunk of water, um, and we started right here, we could figure out how much gravitational potential energy it has. Um, so if we set the ground as being zero gravitational potential energy, then it'd just be the mass of that chunk we're looking at times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, times whatever this height is from high point to the ground. And then if we track that, we see, well, it loses some height when it uh, falls off that first little edge there. So it goes down in gravitational potential energy. And then it goes along here at some constant potential energy, and then it drops again. So it loses more gravitational potential energy, and then it goes along at a constant height, constant potential energy, and then it drops one last time, uh, loses more potential energy, until the pump does work on that bit of water and brings it all the way back up here to its starting point. And since it's at the same height that it started at, it must have the same potential energy that it started at. So we have lost energy, lost energy, lost energy, and then gained energy. But the net change in energy here is zero. Energy is conserved when we go through one cycle here. Now what if we make this a little bit more complicated path? Let's say we have a little drop and a little drop and a little drop. And then, oh, maybe another pump here. And all the way up to this even higher position than it started at before it gets to this really big drop. Well, we can still go through exactly the same argument. I start right here and I watch some little bit of water and I see it drops, so it loses potential energy, loses gravitational potential energy, loses potential energy again. The pump here takes it up higher, so it's gaining potential energy, and then it loses a whole bunch of potential energy here. And then the pump takes it back up again. It's gaining potential energy. So we have lots of little losses and gains, and a big loss and big gains there. But we end up still at the same height that we started at, which means that all the gains and all the losses of energy have to balance each other. They have to add up to a net change of energy of zero because we start and end at the same height, which means we start and end with the same gravitational potential energy. Even if our path is complicated in that we have multiple routes that our water can take, that same relationship holds true. So let's say out of the pump, some of our water goes along this path and it drops down here, and then it travels here, and then drops down here, and then travels to the pump and then back up. Some of our water goes along this path and it just has this one big drop all the way down here. And then back to the pump. 
Well, exactly the same thing happens on this one. So if we lose potential energy in this big drop here, but then that pump gives our water back its potential energy. It ends up at the same place that it starts. It doesn't matter if we go this route, we drop and then drop again and then go back up to where we started. We're still right where we started. So we still have the same gravitational potential energy. And here's something neat. The water right here and the water right here, since they're at the same height, they have the same gravitational potential energy. And the water right here and the water right here also same height, same gravitational potential energy. So we could also write that the drop from here to here plus the drop from here to here has to be the same as the drop from here to here. So we could think of that drop in terms of the height or the gravitational potential energy, or in circuits it's going to be electric potential energy, or the voltage drop from here to here, plus the voltage drop from here to here would be equal to the voltage drop from here to here. As long as we have our water or our charges at the same point at the beginning and end, we know the total voltage drop has to be the same regardless of the route. Okay, now let's move on from the abstract looks at this in terms of uh, the water analogy to a circuit, the, the schematic for a circuit. So, if we followed some bit of charge, some bit of our current, and we went around some complete loop to get back to our starting point, we're going to say that um, Kirchhoff's rule here says delta V is equal to zero, the total change in uh, electric potential, or the total voltage drop, is zero for any complete loop. So if we watched this some bit of current travel through this resistor and through this resistor and oh gosh we've got a fork in the path here. Let's say this bit of current goes through this resistor and then it comes back here, rejoins that other uh, bit of current that split off, goes through this resistor and then oh maybe this part goes right through the middle and all the way around here getting back to our starting position. So the total voltage drop, or the total change in electric potential energy for one complete loop, and this is a complete loop, we go around in a full circle back to our starting point, has to be zero. So in this case, we could look at delta V1, and delta V2, and delta V3. Every time we hit a resistor, we drop voltage. Oh, we, we have a, a voltage drop, rather. Delta V6, oops. And then we have some voltage V on this battery. So I could say, well, I know the battery is going to add voltage. So I think of that as like a positive number. And then minus delta V1, minus delta V2, minus delta V3 minus delta V4, minus delta V5, minus delta V6, that has to equal zero altogether. I go up by a certain amount from this battery, and then these individual drops, no matter how many of them or which route I take, has to get me back to zero. Now it works the same way if I would have taken a different route here. Say so go down this branch and then go down this branch here, and we might label those voltages differently, but the total voltage drop would have to be, uh, or the total change in potential energy would have to be zero for one complete loop. And we do have to include the battery there. Now, you can have multiple batteries in a circuit, and it works exactly the same way. We just have an additional positive term in that, uh, in that case. Or if we had the battery flipped the wrong way, it could be a negative term as well. Now, there's one other thing that we talked about looking at uh, different um, different pathways that things can take. So let's name this delta V, what do I have to do, 7 and delta V8. If we looked at current right here, some bit of charge right here, and then some bit of charge right here, you now those, uh, those charges have dropped in electric potential energy, but the charges that take 
on this path and the charges that take this path would have to drop by the same amount of potential energy because regardless they're here at one point and they're here at the next it doesn't matter which path we take to get from point to point all that matters is the potential energy any charge that's along this wire has the same amount of potential energy any charge that's along this wire has the same amount of potential energy equal potential energies all along the wire so maybe we have 10 volts here and 5 volts here that would mean we drop 5 volts going across this resistor and that we drop 5 volts going across this pair of resistors not 5 volts for each one but 5 volts altogether so maybe 3 here and 2 here or 4 and 1 some combination that adds up to 5 volts to get us um, to that 5 volt mark when we get to to this point right here when we think about the junction rule we can also uh, keep in mind here that we have some total amount of current leaving the battery and it's going to split into two here but the total amount of current for this path plus this path has to equal the amount of current going through this single path and then it comes back together we have our total current through this little stretch and it splits off into three here and then those three come back together down here and we have our total current going all the way back to the battery again so we'll keep going back and forth between the loop rule and the junction rule and Ohm's law and the next idea the last thing we have to do before we can start solving these problems is think about this idea of equivalent resistance so that'll be in the next video